my read alouds. So I found these really cool books by Diane Alber, and this is just one of them. So this is Never Let a Unicorn Scribble. And I actually really love Diane Alber because she works with like social emotional skills and persistence, but also art and color. And that's a big reason why I chose it. And then I paired it with Never Let a Dinosaur Scribble, which is the same idea of books, just a boy instead of a girl and a dinosaur instead of a unicorn. And then what I did for my activity was I actually worked with the kids on a Venn diagram and I put pictures on here and they had to move the pictures based off of what story it was in. So if it was just in the unicorn story, if it was just in the dinosaur story, or if it was in both stories. And the kids actually really seemed to enjoy it. And I think they liked doing the Venn diagram with the pictures instead of having to write out the words because a lot of our kids struggle with that. So that is what I did. So. Okay, so I can't screen share. I don't have, I'm functioning off my phone right now, but so I did Creepy Carrots by uh, Aaron Reynolds and Peter Brown. And I chose this obviously because it's kind of the season for Halloween, but also because we have the Creepy Pair of Underwear book and my five-year-old loves it. So I've been meaning to add this one to our collection and was kind of saving it for this activity. Um, so we read the book together. We went through, there's a couple really good vocabulary words. There were some vocab words that popped up kind of just naturally through our discussion, which was also really good. And then we went on to create some creepy carrots ourselves, which I will include in my reflection, the photos of, um, to look just like the book. Um, and we focused on like the expressions and what in the expressions made them look angry and creepy. So we focused on those. And then we spent a good amount of time um, searching the house for orange objects um, because in the book, Jasper has a lot of moments where his mind is playing tricks on him, where he's seeing orange things. Like here he's seeing orange garbage, orange curtains, orange, um, flowers by a gravesite and he thinks that they're creepy carrots he thinks he's being followed so we did a lot of playing with finding orange objects in our house and hiding them around um, in different places on each other to see if you know we were having the same experience that jasper rabbit had of kind of like getting spooked by what we thought were creepy carrots um and then we also uh, built a fence because in the end of the book, the way that Jasper uh, gets rid of the carrots following him is he builds this massive fence with a moat and crocodiles. Um, but then it turns out that the creepy carrots had wanted him to do that all along so that he would stop eating them. So we, as a STEM activity, built uh built a fence with clothespins and popsicle sticks and just kind of messed around with the physics of that, which was really fun. So, um, yeah, that's what I did. That's awesome. Okay. So my book is Thank You, Amu by Age Mora. And why did I choose this book? Well, when I was thinking about like harvest season and a lot of um, home cooked things that are going on in our kitchen right now. Apple Chris kind of popped into my head. My mom had sent me a copy of my grandma's handwriting with the recipe for Apple Chris. So this book, when I took a look at it, it's um, connected to the grandma is Amu. It's a Nigerian word for um not grandmother, not princess. What is it? Renee knows. I know she does. <laughs> I'm actually queen. drawing a blank right now. It's queen. I, it's right on the first page. I forgot. So Amu is the word for queen in a Nigerian language, which the author points out in an interview that I watched with her. And she 
has this connection to her grandmother. So she named her character Amu after her grandmother. So the draw for that, I thought the kids would be able to have a really strong connection between things that their grandmother has cooked for them. A lot of times they've talked about that in the past during like our classes. So that was my first. Um, I thought the kids would have a strong connection to that. And then I liked the um, collage images that the author is also the illustrator. Okay, Mora is the illustrator for this book. And she has a style that when I looked at her website for books, you could see that all of her other books that she's created are kind of in the similar fashion. Like you'll know when you see the author or illustrator is Agay Mora because of the look of the book. It just has her style to it. So I thought it would be interesting for the kids to repurpose old books and magazines to create an image of a special meal that they've had with their grandmother or with their mother because, you know, family structure is not always the same, but just a some kind of a memory that they have of one of their favorite foods. And so I had supplies like magazines and old books that they could cut up that maybe were damaged somehow. So then, and while we're reading the book, I pointed out, do you see where the old books are in these pictures? Like, cause you could see words were like written on the pages where she had used old books and things. So yeah, then the kids made a collage of an image of some favorite food that they would want to do, want to eat with their grandmother. And we talked about um, how, like I said to you guys before we started, the it was a recessive book in that they're losing the stew as everyone comes to the home of Amu. They take the stew, but then they're gaining all these friends. And so it's kind of a suspense builder and we use prediction. And then now what's Amu going to eat? Because she had nothing left, but she had all these friends. And then at the end, they brought her even a more intense feast than she could have ever imagined because she had so many new friends and the thankfulness grew too. So love this book. I love that book too. Um, <laughs> just when I did see her in person at Oshkosh, she um, also brought up the fact that she is an artist herself. And so when they asked her to be the illustrator as well, she was so excited to do that. So it makes that book a little bit more special in that aspect too. Um, but everybody did such an awesome job. So now it's my turn. Yay. Um, I chose <laughs> the teacher route, the teacher route because of the fact that um, our district is so big on making sure that we teach the standards to the children. And so I always try to be that person to help out that piece. So I chose a book called, this book just ate my dog, and it's by Richard Byron. It is a book that has a lot of vocabulary words and a lot of words that are vo vocabulary based, but they also have synonyms in there. Um, the population of our schools, all the schools that I'm involved in, um, are highly... ELL students. So that was one of the reasons why I chose the book. The other reason is, is because we do have a lot of non-readers and you can read this book, you can read the book, but you can also read the illustrations and still understand what the author is getting at. So one of the things, one of the activities I had them do is to put on their um, observation eyes to be able to see what is happening in the story, what is happening to the characters and what is going on. So there's a lot of critical thinking as well. So if you hear some of the words I'm saying, a lot of that is connected to our standards and helping out those teachers when they come to see me in the media center. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm not sure if you can see, um, but what happens is, is she's taking her dog on a walk and then all of a sudden, the dog disappears and the dog actually disappears into the spine of the book. Um, and she's like, she doesn't know what's going on. So she uses the word disappear, a word that I used in one of the vocabulary words. And then she's like totally surprised. But then her friend comes and says, what's going on? La la. He decides he wants to investigate. So another vocabulary word. And all of a sudden, look what happens to him as well. So the story goes on. And so the kids have to do this thinking process. What is really going on with the characters in the book? And why is she still here? And what happens to her as the story goes on? So again, there's a lot of vocabulary, a lot of critical thinking. 
The last part of it, though, there's a lot of strong connections because kids love dogs. They love taking their um, their dogs on walks or any animal. Um, but the other connection that I tried to get to was he uses the word ridiculous. So at the end of the book, I said to them, what kind of ridiculous walks have you gone on? Did you go on a walk with your puppy or did you go on a walk with your friends and did anything funny happen? So then we add those connection pieces to it. So again, I went the route of not the cutesy part and I wish I probably could have and I still could, um, but I did go the route of the standards. And that's all. Oh, and the second thing is, is he wrote a second book and they love this book as well. This one is called, this book is out of control. And again, that humor piece, something that teachers have to teach as well is what makes something funny. And then when, if you want to write about something funny, you have to have certain aspects in your writing to have that happen. And that's about it.